Ah, <sighs> remember the days when you didn't have to worry about a collection of harmful parasites working their way through your body on a microscopic family vacation? Ah, <sighs> those were the days. So most of us think of ourselves as pretty healthy. We go to the gym, we eat right, and we generally feel overall good. But what if I told you that there may be little creatures living inside you right now that are slowly killing you, and you might not even know it? Well, unfortunately, it's true. And since I felt like it was time for a feel-good video, let's discuss which ones might be hitching a ride inside you right now. So curl up with a warm blanket, and let's get disgusting. Here are 10 horrific parasites that may be inside you right now. Number one is Negliria. Fallery. Remember in old zombie movies how it was oddly adorable that zombies would specifically seek out brains to eat? Well, it's less adorable when it's a reality and they're brain-eating amoeba. Found in warm bodies of fresh water, such as ponds and lakes, this little horror show likes to hop into a person and attack the human nervous system and brain. This causes primary amoebic meningoencephalitis, which in the early days messes with your sense of smell and then rapidly destroys your ability to smell at all. Then there's the basket of horrible symptoms which include headache, nausea, and the rigidity of neck muscles until you get thrown into an irreversible coma. Within only 14 days of exposure, death occurs as a result of respiratory failure. See? Adorable! Now thankfully, the disease is rare and there have been fewer than 200 confirmed cases. So hey, feel free to go swimming in that body of water. You feel lucky enough. Right? Number two is the Wookawiria Bancrofti. Let me introduce you to the Wookawiria Bancrofti, a human parasitic roundworm that is the major cause of lymphatic filariasis, also known as elephantitis. This disease rarely has symptoms but can cause large amounts of swelling in the arms, legs, and even genitals. This growth is often painful and the associated physical changes can affect a person financially and socially. Of the three worms that infect the lymphatic system to cause this disease, Bancrofti is the most common and affects over 120 million people. The worm is found primarily in Central Africa, South and Central America, and the tropical regions of Asia. Limited treatments for this parasite exist, and as of today, no vaccines have been developed. In ancient Greece and Rome, writers noted down the similarities between the enlarged limbs and cracked skin to that of elephants. Because every time someone looks a bit like an animal, we have to call them by it. That's why mature women are called cougars, I think. They just pounce so fast. Number three is the Loa Loa. Aside from sounding like a Hawaiian greeting, it's a tiny little roundworm that, believe me, you would not want to say hi to. Commonly known as the eye worm, the Loa Loa is found in Africa and India. It's one of the three parasitic roundworms that cause subcutaneous filariasis in humans, which is just a fancy way of saying it causes skin and eye disease. The process of infection starts with a vector fly biting an infected human host and then transfers the larvae to another infected human where the larva would mature. The adult Loa Loa migrates through the subcutaneous tissues of humans, occasionally crossing the tissues into the eye where it can be easily observed swimming around in your eyeball. The worms can be removed quite easily with a trip to the surgeon, but the most common treatment is done with the use of a drug called ivermectin. Well, the silver lining is that while this worm is in your eyeball, if you focus on him really hard, you'll notice the little guy waving at you. Hey, little buddy. Number four is Spargana. Some parasites don't hit you hard right away. They take time to do damage slowly until it's too late. Lovely. The Spargana parasite is a very rare parasite that latches onto a part of the body, usually the brain, and feasts upon it for up to 20 years. During that time, you would probably only notice symptoms like headaches or in extreme cases, seizures. Found mostly in Asian regions like China, Korea, Japan, and Thailand, over the last 100 years, there have only been around 1,000 cases. People contracted by eating undercooked meat from a bird, reptile, or other amphibian. You could also get it from contaminated water if you wander too far from modern civilization in those places. Oh boy, another waterborne creature! You know what? I feel good about this. Let's all go for a swim. Number five is Ascaris lumbricoides. Sometimes when worms get in you, they aren't all tiny and deadly. No, sometimes they can be large and deadly. That's the case with the Ascaris lumbricoides, a giant roundworm that can grow up to 35 centimeters in length. Known as the largest and most common parasitic worm in humans, the organism is responsible for the disease Ascariasis. This infection has no symptoms in over 85% of cases when the number of worms inside of you is small. However, when that number in 
increases, the symptoms begin to show, such as shortness of breath and fever early on. Eventually, the symptoms can become abdominal pain and swelling and good old fashioned diarrhea. Children are more commonly affected by it and if they are in fact hit with it can result in poor weight gain, malnutrition and learning problems. In order to avoid these creatures, beware of food or drink contaminated with Ascaris eggs from feces. So in other words, no poo sandwiches kids, no matter how cute that emoji is. Number six is Onchocerca volvulus. Some people are born with blindness and sometimes it happens later in life with age, but there is a little worm out there that can almost guarantee it happens if it gets a hold of you. Onchocerca volvulus is another roundworm, but this little fella causes onchocerciasis or river blindness. Found in Africa, it causes long-term corneal inflammation, which thickens the corneal stroma, which causes blindness. Humans are the sole hosts of the parasite, and the vector or carrier of the ringworm is the black fly. Their common lifespan is one to two years, and their presence in the bloodstream does not cause the body's immune system to react or even attack it. It will continue to remain inside the body until it dies or degrades, then the body just kind of sweeps it away. Well, it's good to know that through all of our evolution, our bodies still cannot recognize weird little foreign wormy things. Thanks, body. Number seven is Toxoplasma gondii. Now, aside from the grab bag of worms that want to get up all in you and do all sorts of horrible damage, we also have what are called protozoan parasites. Toxoplasma gondii is one such protozoan that causes the disease toxoplasmosis. The disease is usually asymptomatic, but depending on if the infected individual is already weakened, the parasite can cause numerous illnesses and damage throughout the body. It's actually very common among humans and can be found in any warm-blooded animal and it's worldwide. But don't worry because in order to avoid it, you basically just have to practice common hygiene techniques like not eating raw meat and ingesting food or water from feces-ridden areas. Interestingly, a number of studies have actually suggested that infection may cause subtle behavioral or personality changes, but evidence is limited. Yeah, I never have personality changes, never. Uh. <clears throat> okay, yep. Make an appointment for the doctor. Okay. Number eight is Trypanosoma bruchi. Another protozoa steps into the ring, only this time its goal is to keep you from meeting the Sandman. The Trypanosoma bruchi is a type of protozoan parasite that causes African trypanosomiasis, also known as sleeping sickness. Like many parasites, the carrier is an insect, and in this case, it's the Setsi fly. When going from fly to human, the parasite undergoes a complex morphological change. It's one of the few pathogens in the world that can cross the blood-brain barrier found in the central nervous system. There is currently an urgent necessity for a new form of drug therapy since the current treatments have been fatal to patients. The sleeping sickness name references the fact that the second stage of the disease brings with it confusion, poor coordination, numbness, and of course trouble sleeping. For you students out there looking to pull all-nighters, don't you be getting any ideas. Trust me, just stick with Red Bull. It's it's really not any safer, but it's not a fly. Number nine is the itch mite. Many parasites get right inside you, but some barely breach the surface while still causing enormous pain. Sarcoptes scabii, or itch mites, are parasitic anthropods that burrow into your skin and cause scabies and itchy rashes. This is formed because the impregnated female has tunneled under your skin and left a litter of eggs. This will give you itchy skin along with red blotches, pain, and copious amounts of pus all from these little squatters pitching tents in the hair follicles of your skin. Humans are not the only lucky ones to be vulnerable to this infection. So can cats, dogs, and pretty much every other mammal. Well, you know, nature is pretty and all, but now that I know these things exist, I won't be hiking anytime soon. And number 10, the candy roo fish. The candy roo fish is a cute little tadpole fella that goes by another cute name, the vampire fish. I'm going to talk specifically to the gentleman just for a moment. Guys, this thing likes to go up the urethra of your penis and just chills out there for a while. Commonly found in Bolivia, Brazil, Colombia, Ecuador, and Peru, these monstrosities wait until a human urinates in water before it jumps up the penis and worms its way into your body. It then uses its poisonous barbs to hold itself in place while it feeds on the fleshy membranes of your situation. One poor fella even claimed that it chewed its way from his urethra to his testicles, but it's believed that the fish's teeth aren't strong enough to do this, so that case remains unconfirmed. 
thank God. This fish is like Mother Nature's defense against peeing in her pool. Nightmares for everyone, la 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 la. And that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I just wanted to remind you that I am on Twitter. Oh! That was really just an excuse to do my bird impression. Twitter's the place where you guys get up to the minute updates about what's going on in my life, as well as what I might just be thinking about at that moment while I'm on the poopa. So if that sounds good to you guys and you haven't followed me yet, now would be the perfect time to do that. My handle is Matthew Santoro and get on that. Ah! As always, if you enjoyed this video, please give that like button a click. And if you'd like to see future videos from me, be sure to click that red subscribe button because I upload every Tuesday and Saturday. Have a great day guys and I will see you later on both my second channel and my social media, specifically Twitter. Ah. I'm weird. <laughs> Peace.